Hello one and all and welcome to Seen Through Glass and welcome to Liverpool. So yes, we are here in Liverpool. I got here last night as you would have seen if you watched yesterday's video. I had a lovely stay in my hotel. Um, nice sleep and I've been up pretty early this morning because for some reason Everywhere I go on this week-long expedition, the internet has been absolutely appalling. So I've really struggled to upload videos. So I've spent the morning in Starbucks. Um, and now I'm getting ready to leave the city centre. Because today we are off to SMC Automotive. Good morning, NTP. Just speaking, I can help you. Hi there, I just inserted my card and it's eaten it, but the gate hasn't opened. Are you raised? Thank you very much, it is. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Well, finally we got out of there. That was a bit nerve wracking. I put my ticket in the machine and nothing happened. Anyway, yes, we are on our way to SMC Automotive. I'll tell you a lot more once we get there. I'm here, I have arrived at SMC as you can see behind me. Now I have a bit of a confession to make before I spin around and show you exactly what SMC do. I am a secret Land Rover Defender obsessive. <laughs> and I know I said in yesterday's video that I bleed Ferrari, but I piss Defenders. And check this out. Now I know lots of you aren't going to really appreciate Land Rover Defenders, but don't worry, inside the guys have some other very special cars that are going to be a lot more up most of your streets, but I don't care because I am passionate about these things. I absolutely love them and there are kind of multiple reasons. I've always, or why do I say I, my family have always had a Defender lurking around. Ever since I was a kid, uh, my dad always had a sort of Defender, it's like almost like a spare car. We live, or they live out in the countryside, not in London, um, and they needed to have a car that they could just use to throw the dogs in, to take off-roading, and so I've had this like natural affinity with Defenders and you may or may not know, but Land Rover actually stopped making the Defender. The very last Defender has rolled off the production line. So no more can you go into a Land Rover dealership and say, I'd like to order a Defender. Which I think makes what the guys are doing here at SMC even cooler. Because not only do they have a load of Defenders to choose from, but as you can see, or as you might not be able to tell, they are also customizing them. So as you can see here on this car, Overland is the sort of branch or division um, of SMC that customizes their defenders. And I think some of these are cool. This is one of the very last defenders, by the way. Uh, and that's actually a stock car, nothing's been done to it yet. It's gonna go through its custom customizations. This car has been customized, which I again think is so cool. It's what's called a double cab, which I love. You have the two cabs here and it's like a pickup truck. This, this is the model that I basically want. Actually, no, I lie. This is the model that I want. This thing, I think, is so insanely cool. It reminds me of the car from Spectre, the James Bond film. And as I said, I just love this double cab set up with the pickup. Imagine me sitting there filming supercars. It'd be like my little, I just rest my camera on there, film cars behind. I am already just having a fantastic day. I just love Defenders, I just do. I just think they're so cool and different. And I think, I think that's the route I'd want to go if I ever got a second car, if I could ever afford to have a second car, I'd want to have like a Defender rather than a, I don't know what, actually, not, well, I just wouldn't want to have a Defender, <laughs> that's basically it. Anyway, it's very cold and it's very windy, we're about half an hour away from Liverpool, we're in Chester, um, in an industrial state, so I'm getting really cold, so I think it's time we head inside, show you some of the other outrageous Defenders they have in there, and some other cars that might be slightly more up your street. You can already spy some pretty outrageous cars, guys. Check this room out. Woo so yes, as I mentioned, the guys don't only do 
defenders. I mean, as you can see, they, they do do lots of defenders, and we're going to be speaking more about those because I am obsessed. But they are also kind of going back to uh, where it all started for them and going back to supercars and sports prestige cars. Um, it's an area of the business which um, they've always been kind of involved with, but they are looking to uh, expand um, very soon across the road, actually. So when we were outside, they're going to be opening up an entire supercar sort of service center. So it's almost like a sort of Joe Macari's of the north. They're going to have supercar dealerships and a service center, as well as continuing to do um, the Defender stuff. We're going to come back to the supercars because there is lots to talk about all of these different cars and I'm obsessed with almost all of them immediately um, but I want to keep talking about Defenders because um, I do just really really like them and in here there are some even cooler ones but I think the best Defenders are through here <gasps> okay so remember I told you I love the double cabs <laughs> this one here is I think it's called the Arts or the Polar Edition I'll have to double check but it is a double cab setup with the sort of like roll cage in the back, this kind of bare white front end thing. <laughs> and I just think it's so cool. It's been worked on, as you can see, customized by Overland, by the guys down here at SMC. Um, it is just so, so cool. And if you look at the interiors of these cars, how nice is this? You get like proper racing bucket seats, all leather, diamond stitching, which I love. You get sort of full sat nav systems, all of that stuff, and then the back even nicer. But yeah, I mean, how cool is this? I was looking at this earlier thinking, wow, that is just the coolest Defender I've ever seen. And then Toby from SMC said, hold on, I'm going to show you an even better one. And he was not lying because down at the end is this animal. <laughs> Check out the wheels on this. And it's even got sort of riveted wheel arches. I am obsessed with this car. It's a one of one custom project that they did. A very rare type of Defender, the big, uh, I think it's the 130 or the 170. Again, I need to check. Um, I'm not that capable with my model knowledge, but it is a complete animal. It's almost like a 6x6 G-Wagon. Again, very similar scheme inside, but this one has got a breakup of some Alcantara as well. Apparently this has got heated seats, heated steering wheel. I mean, look how high up. I don't know if I can show you that. It's so tall, this thing. It is mad, and I love these. Oh, guys, I really, 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 really want an Overland. But it is now time to switch to the kind of other side of the business, which is the supercars, and we can talk through each of the cars that they have in stock currently. So, kicking things off in pretty ridiculous style with an ultraviolet GT3 RS and a Speciale. I mean, when I walked in, that is the window, and you can see through when you walk into reception the rear ends of these two. I was literally like, oh my good lord. I thought I was coming to check out some Defenders, <laughs> saw these, and was like, uh, guys, guys, do, guys, there's some supercars in your, in your garage, do you know? Um, of course they knew, because they're trying to sell them. Um, but yeah, really insanely cool cars. It's the first ultraviolet GT3 RS I've seen, which is really nice. Um, and the colour is really cool in real life. This car is so mean. We were talking about it with James when we were driving his GT3, just how ridiculous this rear wing is. You know what we really like? Again, like I was talking to James about. Is look at that. Look at the gap between the body and the wheel, or the tyre. It's perfect. And then you come over to the Speciale, which looks like it's going off-roading. I don't get that. What are you doing, Ferrari? But anyway, I'm not going to talk badly about the Speciale, because you know, it's my secret lover. Um, and this one is very, very nice. I think this car's going to have some work done to it before it goes fully up for sale. Um, uh, detailing and things like that. Then you've got a convertible GTS. Um, the new shape. I think this has got some exhaust on it. We'll have to ask them shortly. This car I'm going to come back to in a second because this car, <laughs> oh my god. Um, we've got a 360 which apparently has uh, DCAT straight pipes. Um, Paul Wallace will know what that means. I have no idea what it means, but I've been told it's the loudest thing you've ever heard in your entire life. So we're definitely going to start off with that later. I need to try and find some earplugs. And then this is a really interesting car. So it is a 430 but it's basically been converted to a Scud. Um, so it's got Scud suspension, I think Scud remapped gearbox, uh, I think engine. Um, anyway, it, it's basically all been converted to a Scud, as close as it can be, with all Ferrari parts, even official Ferrari Scud wheels, but it remains with the 430 interior. So you get the comfort and usability of 
a standard 430 with the performance of a Scud. It's got um, valve, valve exhaust, so I think standard exhaust, but just with the valve switchable, so you can open them up all the time. But a really interesting prospect because this car is under 100 grand. So you basically get a comfortable Scud for under 100 grand. What do you think? Okay, so now we have come back to discuss this 355. Now, a little bit of a backstory for you. When I was looking at replacing my Audi TTS and ended up in the 4C, when was that, about a year ago? I was looking at cars in the kind of 50 to 60 thousand pound bracket is what I was gonna buy. Um, and at about 65 or 70 grand, no, probably 65 grand, were Ferrari 355s. It is one year later and 355s are now between 90 and 110 grand. What is going on, people? <laughs> the Ferrari market has exploded. But this car right here is worth every penny. This is an incredibly special car. We think one of one in the UK. So this car has the Fiorano pack. I think it was maybe called the Fiorano handling pack or maybe that was the 599. Anyway, it was the, one of the very last 355s to be made. And it was kind of the Scud or Challenge version of the 355. They never did a sort of official lightweight sort of, you know, racier version of the 355, but this was as close as they got. It got completely reworked suspension, reworked gearbox, different brakes, sort of endless different sounds. And I think exhaust got changed and maybe the engine got remapped. It was as close as I, as I say that they got to it. And this car in particular has only done 18,000 miles. It's got loads of challenge, 355, the actual race car parts on it, including a, uh, a challenge steering wheel. Um, it is in incredible condition, grey or silver paint with the red interior, and I think that this is an incredible, incredible car. So what we're going to do now is a bit of an orchestral playoff. We are going to go through and start up the supercars that they have inside here. I, originally I was like, yeah, no, cool, just, just start up the loudest, but they were like, no, it's worth starting them all up. So <laughs> we're literally going to go one by one by one, I think in kind of like order of craziness maybe so that you guys can hopefully get some scale of sound so i will wait for the guys to bring the keys and then we are literally going to do cold startups on all these cars and most of them have crazy pipes on so goodbye to my ears <laughs> That is first up, the 355, which has Capristo exhaust, I believe. Sounds very nice. <laughs> Boomy! Sounds good, actually. That's the second Porsche that I've been surprised by how good it sounds this week. Sounds really good. Okay, so the last one in the lineup is the 360 Spider. Now, I have been warned that this is possibly going to compete with old Paul Wallace and his anti-social mobiles. So, I'm not quite sure how far to stand back, but it sounds somewhere over here. We have jumped into the Carrera GTS with its ridiculous custom exhaust and we are going to go for a hoon. I'm excited to hear this. Apparently it's going to shoot machine gun like crackles at some point. So I'm ready when you are mate. Let's, let's, uh, let's go for it. I mean it's so, so loud for a Porsche. <laughs> it's 
Okay, so next up we are going out in the 360 Spider with what is already sounding like the most ridiculously loud exhaust ever. have been raped that was the most outrageous experience in those two cars they sound ridiculous i mean that is basically a challenge for dali i mean as you can tell i'm completely obsessed by it it is ridiculous i cannot wait to see oh! <laughs> he's just toying with us now and then this a porsche which sounds that good oh guys i think i need to get an exhaust i think it needs to happen it just makes these cars so cool ah! two things i've established today Firstly, that maybe I should start thinking about putting an exhaust on the F-Type. And secondly, maybe I should buy a Defender as like a second daily car. Woo! I feel like today's been very expensive. But anyway, it's been amazing. I think it's probably time for me to leave. The clouds look like they're coming back over somewhere over there. So yeah, I'm going to jump in the M4 and head back, I think, to Liverpool. I haven't told you, but I've got you on my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't ask me to remember anything I was talking about because all I'm thinking about is how I'm driving a Ferrari! 